Welcome to another Onshape video tutorial for Bryanston School. This is the last in a series of five extension tutorials uh, for the model speakers that you would have created earlier on. In this tutorial, we're going to put together all of the parts into an assembly so it looks a little bit more like the speakers that you would have been creating in your practical lessons. So the first thing I'm going to do is to open up the file that I've been working on, which is the oval speaker. When that loads, you'll see the speaker that we've been uh, creating in video tutorial number four. And if we cycle through, we have the mesh that we did in tutorial three, the fasteners that we did in tutorial uh, number two, and the original speaker that we modified for the mounting holes in video tutorial number one. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an assembly where we're going to add these components onto our model. So to do that, uh, we're going to go into the assembly. So whenever we model something in Onshape, uh, it starts off with Part Studio 1, and it will also have uh, an assembly in there as well. So we're going to left-click on the Assembly tab, and you'll see that the tools now are slightly different across the top. These are our assembly tools, uh, allowing us to put our model parts together to create an assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is to insert uh, our main component, which will be the speaker case. So I'm going to left click on insert and you'll see that it shows us uh, part studios within the document that we're working on, so within our current document. And this is why we created separate uh, part studios for all of the different bits that we've been working on. It just makes it easy to put this together as an assembly. We can go to other documents, we can use assemblies within assemblies, they would become sub-assemblies. Uh, but to keep things simple, we've got everything in one document in this particular set of part studios. So we're going to place in the speaker model from Part Studio 1. So left click on that to select it and you'll see that it appears. Now I can move that around and position that how I want in the work area. However, I'm not going to do that. If I just leave it alone, move the, the mouse cursor back over to the list and then go up to the, the, uh, the green tick, you'll see that it matches the origin of the model with the origin of the assembly. And that's what we want to do to start off with. So I'm going to just left click. Now, this can still move around. If I was to grab this by holding down the left mouse button, I could still move this part around in the model. I don't want to be able to do that. So I'm going to right click on the part and I'm going to select the fix option with the left mouse button. So that is now fixed and if we look over here we can see that in this assembly, assembly one, assembly one, uh, we've got our origin and we have uh, part one and there's a little fixed icon by there. So this is fixed in place. So let's add some other components. Now we could um, do this uh, by putting everything in that we wanted to do in one go uh, but sometimes it's a bit easier to do it uh, part by part. So I'm just going to use the mouse wheel to scroll out the way a little bit and then I'm going to go back to insert. So the first part that I'm going to add in is actually going to be our speaker model. So I'm going to left click on the speaker model and I'm going to move it over here into space and I'm going to left click to place it. I'm now going to go to our fasteners. I'm going to open this up by left clicking on the little arrow and we can see that there's two separate parts in there and the part that I want is going to be the nut, the M4 nut. So I'm going to left click on the M4 nut and I'm going to place it roughly where I want it on the screen and I'm going to repeat that three times so that I have the four nuts around that speaker. And I'm just going to close that down for the moment. So let's assemble these. I'm going to hold the right mouse button down and spin that around because the nuts want to be fixed to the back of the speaker. And if I can't see one, it doesn't matter. We can spin this around as we're working. So we're going to use the uh, the fixed or fastened mate tool. This just allows a component to fit to another component and it doesn't allow for any animation. It doesn't allow for any mo movement. And this is actually the, the only 
uh, fasten mate that we're going to use in this tutorial. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to zoom in and you can see that we get these fixing points that I can move the mouse to and depending uh, where I move the mouse to some fixing points disappear. So if I want fixing points to stay that have appeared I can hold the shift key down. So I'm now holding shift and that means that wherever I move the mouse the fixing points that had appeared are stay, stay locked in place. I'm going to use this fixing point here which is on the back surface of the speaker mounting plate and in the center of the hole and you can see that there's a, a kind of a, a bit of a pie or a pac-man drawn and you can see that there are three little lines coming off the three little lines are the different axes the x y and z axes the the blue line is the the z axis which gives us depth so i'm going to left click on that fixing point and you can see that it's appeared up here i'm now going to move uh, the model around holding down the right mouse button so that i can see this face of uh, the nut and again you can see uh, that there's a load of fixing places and if I hover over there now the mouse pointer doesn't have to be on the selected fixing point it just has to have the selected fixing point that I like want highlighted and I can left click and you'll see that one part has moved and if I spin that around you can see that the nut is now stuck to the back of the plate which is what I want so I'm going to left click uh, to confirm that and I'm going to uh, repeat that now it might be a bit easier if I come over do the same on this nut so center of this face left click to select it spin it around come here and s highlight the center of the hole on the back face left click the nuts in the right place I can left click to confirm that let's do the same here spin around so we get the right face on the nut shift it around holding the right mouse button left click in the correct place tick to confirm okay let's uh, zoom in and zoom out and zoom in again do the same for the last nut and the last fixing point left click to confirm and then I can go back here and click on isometric so we've got the nuts fixed to the back of our speaker the next component to add in would be the mesh so let's insert the mesh so go to insert and go to the mesh the mesh is the only part in this particular uh, part studio so I can left click on mesh and I can bring it in to the approximate place that I want and left click to confirm now then on this there are lots of different ways that this could be mounted but actually I can mount it with just one of the fixing holes that we've got so I'm going to select the fasten mate again I'm going to spin it around so I can see the back of the mesh and I'm going to zoom in over this particular hole now if I hover on this surface you can see that there's lots of fixing points so I'm going to hold shift down and I'm going to then move the mouse cursor over to the center back mounting point on the mesh and I'm going to left click on there use the mouse to zoom out on the mouse wheel and then I'm going to do the same on the front of this one so I'm going to hold down shift select the mounting point that's on the front face of the mounting plate of the speaker left click to select it now if I zoom out we can see that the mesh is actually overlapping uh, the ridge on the speaker uh, so what I need to do is I need to put in an offset so if we go back up to here we can see that there's an offset button I can left click in there and then I can enter in some offsets so if we uh, look at the model I just sort of zoom in on on the part we're working on you can see that Z is the offset I want to change uh, which is the blue one uh, X would allow us to move move it left and right and Y the green arrow would allow us to move it up and down Z is the distance that I want to change so I'm just going to spin it around so I can see the Z distance and I'm going to type in 2 on the Z offset and hit enter now you can see that that's actually gone backwards it's moved it in the wrong direction so I need to change that to minus 2 and then hit enter and you can now see that that has moved around and the face of our mesh 
is now aligned with the ridge of our speaker um, but the holes are still lined up our mounting holes are still lined up so I'm going to left click to select that to say that I'm happy with that we're now going to fit uh, the mesh into our speaker now to do this we want another fasten mate we can pick the same corner so I'm going to hover over the the mesh all of the different mating points have uh, shown up I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to select with the left mouse button the mounting point in the center of that fixing hole and now I'm going to come in and I'm going to zoom over to here now I can spin this around but it's quite difficult to see the mounting point but if I hover the mouse over the inside edge of the circle so I move the mouse out the way again we can see that this is the inside edge of the hole so if I select that point it picks up the middle I can left click and our mesh is there now you'll notice that the mesh has been put in position but it's left the speaker and the nuts behind that's perfectly normal it this the software does that just to make it uh, quicker to preview what you're doing I know that's correct so I'm going to left click to confirm that and you'll now see that the speaker and the nuts have moved as well the next thing I'm going to do is to add in uh, the four screws so insert open up the fasteners I want the M4 screw and I need four of these so I'm going to bring four in left clicking to select and left clicking to place and then tick to say that I'm happy with those right again we're going to use a fasten mate I'm going to zoom in we can pick up the outside edge of the uh, screw and that will pick the center of that face and I'm going to do the same on the hole and there's our screw fitted in nice and flush and I'm just going to repeat that four times so highlight the edge click for the center highlight the edge click for the center and do that two more times so edge edge click to confirm outer edge outer edge click to confirm and we've got our four mounting screws now holding the speakers in place okay uh, so I'm just going to skip ahead and I'm going to repeat that uh, on the other side and I'll uh, then come back to you and show you how we can create an exploded assembly drawing welcome back okay so you can see that I've repeated that process to add in another set of nuts screws a speaker and a mesh into the other side of the speaker what I'm going to show you now is how you can turn this into an exploded version which allows you to see how the different components would fit together by looking at the model as it is at the moment you cannot tell um, how the parts go together and in fact you wouldn't even know that there were some uh, nuts in behind those screws so to create an exploded view we come over to here and we use the exploded views panel and we add an exploded view now I'm just going to drag this across a little bit because that doesn't need to be quite so big and it gives us a bit more room now traditionally an exploded view is done in an isometric uh, view so I've already selected isometric on here and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so that I've got a bit of room to do this so the first part that I'm going to do uh, on the exploded view I'm going to move out the screws so I'm going to select each screw and as I select the screws you'll see that they become highlighted in yellow and you'll see that this appears I'm going to use this line I'm going to hold on to the arrow with the left mouse button held down and I'm just going to drag the screws out and I'm going to come right the way over here I'm going to left click the tick to confirm now the screws you'll see are still highlighted so I need to click 
away from the screws to deselect them. The next part I'm going to bring out is going to be the mesh. So I'm going to left click the mesh and I'm going to pull that out as well so that it almost overlaps. So round about here. Happy with that. Left click and then left click in space to deselect it. Next one's going to be the speaker. So left click on the speaker and then I can pull that out. Now that's not coming out all the way. Uh, but that doesn't matter so let's pull that out part way left click to confirm um, now if I've already got some parts that have been pulled out I can pull those out further by selecting them again so let's do that let's select the speaker the mesh the four screws and then use the arrow to pull those out even further so we're happy with that left click to deselect. So finally I need to bring out uh, those four nuts. Now I've been selecting them in the drawing, I can select them here as well. Um, so there's a part that you know there that's difficult to see, it makes it a bit easier. So I'm going to select nut 1, nut 2, nut 3 and nut 4 and I'm going to pull those out like so and left click and left click. Uh, so I could uh, do the same on this side, but actually, because of the way this model works, uh, it looks quite good to see one side exploded and one side left out. Now, I suppose there might be a little bit of confusion here with that nut where that nut lines up. So I'm just going to zoom out and let's just drag everything slightly further out. So one final movement, select everything. And then just pull that slightly further out. Left click to say that we're happy. And that's simply how we create our exploded view. So we can then put that into a drawing. So I'm going to left click on done. So it puts it back, it assembles it back together. And I'm now going to create a drawing. So to create an assembly drawing, I'm going to come down to the plus sign, left click left click on create drawing. Uh, now normally we would work on A4 paper and D but just because of the size of an exploded drawing um, it might make it uh, a bit clearer I suppose to do it on A3. Um, if we were doing this for coursework in uh, GCSE or A level or IB uh, we'd probably do this on A3 as well. Um, but we can st we'll stick to A4 so it fits in your folder. So I'm going to use a custom template. I'm going to pick on ISO for Inter International Standards Organization and we'll go A4. Now there is an A4 and an A4 portrait. It's A4 landscape that we want. We normally work in third angle although we're going to do this in isometric so that doesn't matter. And um, what we could do is we could turn off the borders and things um, to give us a bit more space. So we'll do that. So we're not going to include a border and we're not going to include a title block, which will give us a blank piece of A4 paper, a bit more room. Left click on OK and the software will load up a blank piece of A4 paper. So it now wants us to select a partner assembly. So we're going to go to the assembly and we're going to use assembly one and you can see that it tries to do a little preview we could use this to create an orthographic drawing if we wanted to at a scale of one to three but our view orientation that we want it wants to be isometric so we're going to left click on here left click on isometric and again you can see that it gives us a little preview doing it at third scale uh, what we actually want to do is have the exploded drawing uh, so where it says explode or position default, we're going to left click on that and pick explode one. And you can see that the preview for that takes up a bit more space. Now that's at a scale of one to three. We can probably get away with a scale of one to two. So let's change that to one to two uh, and that will fit on there quite nicely. Uh, I think if we go to one to one, it's not quite going to fit. So let's go back to one to two. You can play around with different scales. And once you've got the preview, left click to place it. And then you can use this as a, a template or a print off for doing a rendered view. Render it using pencils or marker pens as part of your speaker project.
Thanks for watching. That's the last episode in the extension tasks. Hope you've enjoyed working through these and no doubt we will uh, meet again at some point when we do some other tutorials for some other projects that you do at Bryanson School. Goodbye.